welcome to On My Way to Wealth, the podcast where busy Gen Xers can learn financial tips as they navigate life on their way to wealth. And now, please join your host, Luis Rosa. This episode is brought to you by Latin Excellence. Visit latinexcellence.com. That's latinx, C-E-L-L-E-N-C-E.com or latinxmovement.com to learn more and shop our merchandise. You are excellence. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Own My Way to Wealth, Hispanic Heritage Month edition. My name is Luis Rosa, and I'm your host. Hispanic Heritage Month takes place from September 15th to October 15th every year as a time to recognize and celebrate the many contributions, culture, and extensive histories of the American Latino community. It first began as Hispanic Heritage Week in 1968 and later on became Hispanic Heritage Month in 1988. Since then, the month has been celebrated nationwide through festivals, art shows, conferences, community gatherings, and much more. The reason it starts on September 15th is because it celebrates the independence days of several Latin American countries, including Costa Rica, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, and Nicaragua on September 15th, Mexico on September 16th, and Chile on September 18th. It also includes holidays that recognize Hispanic contributions, such as Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, Friendship Day, which is celebrated in the U.S. Virgin Islands the second Monday in October. For this month, I'd like to highlight individuals who have made a great contribution in their chosen profession and the community at large. So now I'd like to introduce you today to a very special guest, Mayra Rocha. Mayra is a media executive and Emmy Award-winning journalist. She's a graduate of the University of Virginia's Darden School of Business. In her 15 years of experience, she has interviewed politicians and leaders of our time for the most respected news programs in U.S. Hispanic television, Aquí y Ahora. She's also Senior Strategy Executive Director for Univision Networks and Fusion Media. Currently, she's the president of Project M Media, a digital strategy corporation which focuses on the management and development of personal finance content. She's also advisor to the scale up program at Miami-Dade College, where her cross-functional expertise in finance, strategy, operations, and marketing helps small businesses scale up to the next level. She is also a contributing business expert for Univision Networks and its flagship show, Primer Impacto and Univision Noticias. She produces Café Dato, a personal finance show for Univision. She also reports for Marketplace, which airs on NPR, the most prestigious economic show in the U.S. And now, without further ado, bienvenida, Mayra. Muchísimas gracias, Luis. Thank you so much, Luis. And it was a pleasure to be uh, speaking with you. I've been looking forward to this. It is my honor. Now I can rub it in uh, with my fellow podcasters. I have an Emmy Award winning journalist on my show. So (laughs) I have bragging rights. (laughs) Thank you. My first question is, how do you sleep? I mean, with this impressive bio. (laughs) Well, um, I don't sleep as much as I used to, which is fair to say. But uh, we'll speak about it. But it's all about being very strategic and uh, learning to manage your your time and learning to listen to your body and just um, it's all kinds of like strategy. But um, it can get done. <laughs> Absolutely, with determination, right? So I like this. If you can tell us a little bit just about your your background, your upbringing, so that we can get to know you a little better. Yeah, so I always, um, I'm very proud of the fact that I grew up in Tijuana, Mexico. I went to school in San Diego. So I am a true border girl. And um, and I think, and I always say that because it, it influenced a lot who I am. So I'm, I'm completely bicultural, bilingual. And um, so my upbringing was, um, you know, growing up, with, you know, with my grandma, like very Mexican family, everyone came in and out of the house. Yet I went to school in San Diego. I did sports in San Diego. As I got older, I went to the movies in San Diego. I came back and had dinner with family in the evening. So, and I say this because it has to do a lot with who I am. You know, this question you asked me, how do you do it? And I think it's that combination of like, being Latin and thinking you can do everything without really planning yet having the tools, the U.S., you know, the, the U.S. Uh, education tools, I don't know, to do it. So um, I grew up, you know, I, I had a beautiful childhood. Lots of family was involved. Um, my family owns a small business and um, they are super hard working. In everything I do, sincerely, it's 
50% of how hard they work. So I grew up watching them work so hard and they, they actually, um, uh, they grew their tiny business into like four, um, locations. They sell, uh, radiators. Um, they just opened their at 60. They just opened their location in LA. So I have, I'm lucky that I had someone that I can look up to, right? Not everyone has that luck. So, um, that was my childhood. That's, that's how I, um, grew up. That is awesome. At 60, I mean, that, that tells you, because he's a boy right there, you know? <laughs> it's never too late. That's amazing. That's so inspiring, you know? And, you know, speaking of, like, mentors and, and family, right? Like, uh, who specifically has been, like, some of the most influential person or people in your life that you can remember that you just kind of got inspired by or, or learned life lessons from? Um, I think that... Um... I think that they're, they're, you get inspired in different moments and stages, right? When you're little, you look up to someone. And then as you, you, you kind of get towards that goal, you find someone else. Um, I think when I was younger, um, I, I did gymnastics. Oh, wow. And, uh, Add yeah, that no, to, the, to the bio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was a part of the national team, but uh, not... I didn't get to the Olympics. I was like 11th or something for the Mexico team. But I had a coach um, and he was a wonderful human being. So it's not to say I wanted to be a gymnastics coach, but I think he greatly influenced um, who I am as a person. He was a, 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 he was like a second father to me. Um, so, you know, I have, you know, I always have that side of me that, it's almost like it's 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 the the human side where I want to help, where I want to do good for the world. Um, I was part of the YMCA. He was a YMCA coach, and I don't know if you're familiar with the YMCA, but they are very um, you know close to you know positive values, and and um, so that was one person. Obviously, my parents. I just mentioned them. Um, they they're great people. I um, you know I, I looked up to them, and uh, like a lot of us Latin. Um, that grew up with Latin families, my grandma influenced in that. Um, again, she was a good person. She, she, um, she focused on us. Um, I think that uh, that's one thing. And I don't know if all abuelitas are like that, but ours, mine certainly focused. It was, she had, her life was us. So that was really comforting when you're young, right? Because it gives you confidence. Um, and then, um, you know, I, as I got older, I, it's just moments. I, I, when I was a gymnast, you know, get, I would get interviewed by reporters, local reporters when I would win and so on. So I think I just was like, oh, I want to do what she's doing. And that influenced me, you know, my full career. Um, and, um, and you just, I don't know. I mean, my, 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 one of my big in uh, more than, you know, mentors and people, person that I look up to is Marilena Salinas. Um, I think that um, as I got older, I realized that um, it's not a, not just about success. It's about the whole, the 360. And uh, she embodies someone that I look up to because she's a good mom. And it's hard to be in television. You just work so hard. There's so many divorces. There's so many egos. There's so much work and stress. And she managed to somehow become successful. Yet, you know, we would be working and her daughter would call her about the dentist appointment and she'd stop and make the call. So I look up to her. I think that um, her her values, her um, um, just her full success is what, I see a success, right? Yeah, that is awesome. You know, it's, it sounds like you had such a great, like, you know how it says it takes a village, right? You had like such oh. a great village around you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> from totally. your abuelita to your parents and, and your coach. And it's interesting how you went from being an athlete, right? Being interviewed and then that triggering, like, hey, maybe I could do that one day. And now you are doing that. And, and you're on the other side where you're the one interviewing people um, and producing content, right? Which is amazing. Um, and you know, it, it's something that you mentioned about Marilena Salinas uh, got to me because I, I was thinking about all the mothers now during the pandemic 
they had to, you know, when, when childcare was no longer an option and they were juggling like their jobs, you know, I have clients that are teachers, for example, and they were like in one room teaching, you know, working, right? But then the, the other room, they had their own kids to worry about and just having to manage all that. I can't even imagine, you know, what that must have been like for these mothers out there. So uh, it's amazing, you know, how is that the human spirit, like we, we, we go through adversity, but... <laughs> You know, going back to like what you said originally, it's like, even if there's no plan, you just like have that faith, right? It's going to work out. We're just going to go get it done. <laughs> yes. So that is awesome. So tell me a little bit about how like your Hispanic heritage influenced your career. Well, I think it has to do, um, you know, it has to do everything about my career. Um, my Hispanic heritage pushed me harder. Um I'm sure a lot of your listeners have felt this. I always felt like I had to prove myself harder because I was Hispanic. Like I couldn't, I don't know, like so simple as like, if I ate somewhere, I had to clean up and make sure that the, you know, if I'm at a restaurant, I want to leave everything clean. So they don't say that Latinos are, Those people, right? Yeah. <laughs> see, <laughs> and, you know, I wanted to do good in school so that they don't say, you know, I had this weird, you know, Hispanic thing in my head where I wanted to sort of salir. Yeah. It also, you just want to do better. You're, you know, my parents so hard that you just, ugh, you just like, it's almost like you owe it to them. Like, ugh, you know, I have to do better. I can't just like get Fs because I see them work so hard for me to go to private school. So therefore I have to, and I don't know if those are Hispanic things that we have in our head, right? Like how we're brought up to be good kids and so on. But um, other than that, it's just, um, I think my Hispanic heritage is, is working hard, um, helping others, uh, you know, being able to, to make friendships that, you know, it help you at work. Right. Because when you, you know, it's that team that I talk about it. If you follow my page about like, it's like my gang of uh, women. It's like a gang, like because you support each yeah. other. Uh, a positive pack. gang. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I think also, um, you know, the family connection, the constant family connection, the constant, um, you know, trying to make them proud. And, um, and I think that just the tools that our culture naturally gives us, right? Like just move forward and, 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 you know, we, we, we applaud, um, uh, we applaud, I think, um, brave people, right. In our culture, we applaud, you know, success. And so it's just a part of him. I also learned, you know, I also love, um, and I also had downtime and I had, you know, beautiful downtime, which is, you know, in our homes where you can, you know, enjoy, well, I, you know, I could enjoy Mexico. I could enjoy that. I don't know, other Latin connect connection. Yeah, no, that's amazing. Um, and, you know, I'd like to know a little bit more about your trajectory, right? How do you go from like being in gymnastics? Like, and then how, what does that look like for you to eventually end up being on television and all that? Tell me a little bit about that. So I think what gymnastics did to me was it, it did two things. It gave me structure. Gymnastics is uh, it's a very hard sport. It's um, it's a um, I always joke it. It's a hey, what's the word? I'm sorry. Um, what it's it's a hard sport. If you you got to dedicate all of your um time, it's. You, you know, I remember taking like a week off with my parents for vacation and I'd come back and my body is like, it took me like a week to get back into it. Like I'd be falling or like my balance. It's crazy. It's, it's a sport that requires all of you. So I didn't, I had a good, you know, teenage life, but I certainly didn't have the regular teenage life. I was always working out. I would work out three to four hours. So I got used to that routine. I got used to understanding that you work hard, you get, um, you know, you do better on competitions and so on. So, and th so it did that. It gave me structure and it gave me, uh, it opened my mind, right? I'm from Tijuana. No one in my family had ever done that com kind of competitive sports. Um, so it opened my mind in the sense of, of thinking it's normal to travel 
and stay in hotels and go all over the country. And so my parents couldn't always come with me. They didn't, um, when, you know, when I was young, they were starting their business. And sometimes I would, you know, there was only two moms on the team and I would be there eight years old, 10 years old, traveling to Boston. And wow. so I always say that it opened my mind to the point where when it came time to go to college, you know, the, the idea of staying home was, was not there. I mean, I'm like, I'm, I'm going away, right. I'm <laughs> flying right. out of here. That was the normal. <laughs> so I don't know if I had, if I hadn't done that, I might've been scared or all of my friends in the, were start, not all, but my, a lot of my gymnastics friends were studying, going to be studying in other states. So it was normal to me. Um, so that's, I think, so it opened my mind. I, I researched, um, I wanted to work on Univision. So in my, um, in my little small teen high school brain, <laughs> I figured if I'm in Miami, I should be able to get there easier. That's, that's smart. Oh, good. Proximity. <laughs> <laughs> um, I went one year before I came to Miami. I was in uh, Paris. I did like a study abroad. Um, which was you know, really nice if anyone has kids and they can financially do that. Um, it was a beautiful experience. Um, so I think I say all of this because it, it just gives you confidence. Like I think that goals, um, it takes a village, it takes you know hard work, but it also takes familiarity. It takes you being able to have confidence and say, I think I can do this, right? Not... I don't think people were meant as humans to do like a zero to 100 jump. I, I, there's people that can do it, right? But most of us go like zero, five, 10 or zero, 20. So I think my whole life um, led me to that. Um, and I, at UM, um, I did an internship. I did many internships. I did unpaid internships. I drove many places for free. <laughs> But I finally got all of that led to um, to uh, an internship at Despierta America. So yeah, it was fun. I did the four a.m. Yeah, the the waking up it was very hard, <laughs> especially when you're <laughs> you have in to be college. there at four. At four. Oh, that's rough. Yeah, but you know, so you you watch Despierta America. It's so fun. And then um, I got hired to do. Um, Aquí ahora, you know, and uh, which was a dream, really. It was, you know, Univision's, you know, most, I don't want to say prestigious, but we certainly did most of the prestigious interviews. Um, I had a great, um, I ha a, a, a great uh, boss, um, soup, very, very strong personality, very smart. So I was lucky again. I mean, when I say lucky, you know, lucky implies a lot of things. You know, she was hard. We traveled all the time. I had a baby and I was all over this country traveling and internationally. But I learned to be a good journalist and I learned to have ethics and I learned I work with the best. So um, so that's how I got there. And I have to say, talking about fears and being, I think like I always joke that like Norancia Avanza ignorance advances. It's not always true, but um, I got the Despierta America internship because a friend invited me to go with her to Univision. She, she was, I don't know what she was doing. She was like uh, doing some sort of production and I was inside. And back then there was a phone there in the studio. And I figured, well, if I call from inside, I may have more chance, right? So I called HR from that phone and I'm like, oh, hi, I'm interested in an internship. I'm here. Would it be possible to speak with someone? I have no idea how the stars aligned. And they're like, oh yeah, you can talk to so-and-so. So-and-so came down and I said, I'm at UM, I'm studying at University of Miami and I have to do an internship. And he's like, you know, I, I think I have my resume. And he's like, okay. You were ready. <laughs> you can start in whatever. So again, you know, I had a good background. I was at a good school. Um, you know, I had my resume ready. So I was kind of ready, but totally like 
I don't know if I would do that now, but at 20, 20 years old, I thought, I'm like, I'll give it a shot. And it worked. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's amazing to me. I love how you use the word lucky, but not in the traditional sense when people think like, oh, she just happened to be at the right place at the right time. But no, you actually packed it into like, no, like, I did all the work. You took the initiative. And yes, you were at the right place at the right time, but you created the opportunity because you could have easily just stayed there and watched the taping of the show and not pick up that phone, right? And <laughs> it would have been a completely different outcome. So that is amazing that, that you know, you just had that in you to put, put yourself in that opportunity and just created it out of, you know, a combination of hard work and, and taking your shot. You know, that's amazing. I love how you frame that. And then just to, to, to take you to now... I was a producer for many years, but it's very hard in television to do go from producing to on camera. It's like a weird, you know, it's like an industry thing. So um, I asked my boss at the time and he's like, no, you're not. You know, after I had done so many stories and so on. And, and I said, I want to be on camera. And he's like, no, you're not ready. So I'm like, OK, well, you know, either I I'm not ready or I do something about it. So I um, I. Um, I was getting ready. I was waiting ready for something else. Like I just needed a change. And I, that's when I decided to do the MBA and I came back and, um, and as with an MBA, right. I, I sold myself as the business reporter. Like I will only do business stories and, and, and this is my beat now. And it's hard because, you know, wow. you, you, you had to say no hard. to some you opportunities. You had to say no. Yeah. <laughs> but I got on camera. I, you know, I, I, that was about maybe four years ago. I, I did a lot of stuff um, that, you know, with my, while I was working doing, I was doing strategy for Univision. I would go do on camera stuff. I would, uh, you know, stay extra work, extra, whatever, but on camera to get on my beat, which I wanted to do business. So um, you know, like, again, it looks easy, but it's been a lot of hard work. I mentioned at the beginning, um, you know, pushing for business stories with Univision, writing. Sometimes, for example, I would do a TV story and I would offer an article for, I, I don't want to say for free, but when you're not being asked, it's like extra time, right? It's like, they're not asking for it, but I'd say, here's my article in Spanish and English. Why? Because it was my, my way of positioning. So now, after three or four years, that's my beat. And I don't, you know, I have, thank God, uh, enough work in, in business and personal finance where I don't have to do other subjects. But yeah, it's, everything is hard work, unfortunately. <laughs> I love that though, because it's kind of like you, you had the universe bend the rules to you. Like you were like, no, this is what I'm doing. <laughs> and I'm just going to create it. Like I'm going to say no to any other thing that comes my way. Yeah, oh. I'm yes. going to start pitching stuff that I wasn't asked and I'm just going to act as if I'm already there. Right. And create again. Oh, that totally. opportunity. I love that. That is so inspiring. <laughs> that is so inspiring. Um, you know, uh, I read somewhere I was, you know, stalking you a little bit. So I read somewhere that you recently completed a triathlon and I love the analogy that you compared it to like somebody's, um, you know, like personal finance trajectory. And I really love how you like just broke that down. If it, can you share a little bit of that with us? Yes. Yeah, so, so I did a, a joined the triathlon uh, group. I've always wanted to do it. Right. It's been like I'm sure we all have it. Not we all, but a lot of us may have it as a kind of like a life goal. But I think um, I think that it was so overwhelming. Right. That it, it's just hard to just join a club and just. Do it. So I, I, I happened to find, I started to do, I was in that, in that mode, kind of like d running and doing exercise. And I happened to one of my friends tell me that there was a beginner's triathlon group, which led you through this triathlon process like a baby. <laughs> like, like today we're going to look at shoes. Today we're going to look at how to swim. Um, you know, what drinks to carry on your bicycle. So it was like, a, um, yeah, like it was three months, like beginners uh, group. Everyone was as lost as I was, but every Saturday and Sunday 
you have you were there by 6 30 i think in the morning and uh and then you had an app where you had to do either you join them or you had to do certain exercise so it was like i was being led right through this and and i say this because um i did the triathlon i finally you know you through the process first you start swimming in the ocean and that's scary and then you start swimming more and then um then you swim and run and then you know it's not like i am going to do a triathlon no 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 like there's steps right and i think personal finance is that it's it's hey 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 let's look at your let's look at where you're at let's like like tranquila like let's let's see where you can save money let's see you know how can we get you more money it's like like slow processes to the point where where you you know it's like gearing up to the triathlon day and the triathlon I, I mentioned in that post that I wish I would have worked out much more. I wish that I would have bought my bicycle uh, before. It was an expensive bicycle. So true to my personal finance teachings, I wasn't just going to go buy a crazy expensive bicycle in month one. So anyway, there were lots of things I wish would have happened. There were weeks where I had to travel and I was totally off and I'd come back and I had to restart. But the thing is the mindset, like the goal, the mindset, keeping up with your with your group, right? Keeping up and being engaged. The moment you disengage from that group, it's hard. Everything by yourself is going to be hard. So, you know, that kept me in there. Um, when I finally did it, I was, uh, I think I was third to last in my group. And, um, and I was slow and, and, um, you know, I wish I would have done better, but my podium, and I say that is my podium was finishing because you have to have realistic goals, right? I wasn't going to like, I hadn't really done the work, move my life, right? I'm a single mom. I work and I'm doing this. So I have to be realistic. And my, my goal was to finish and that's it. Next time my goal is to not finish third, you know, I want to finish more like a little higher, <laughs> but, um, so that, you know, and I compare that because we're sometimes we're super hard on ourselves. And, and I think, you know, having a goal of finishing was not crazy. I remember swimming and, um, and I was swimming so slow in the ocean that the, in the competition, they have, um, a, ¿cómo se llaman los que te cuidan? Um, lifeguards, lifeguards. And I remember one kind of like looking at me, like, is this one going to make it? And I'm like, <laughs> of course I'm going to make it. <laughs> but I was swimming slow and I knew it. And I didn't care because I was pacing myself so that I could finish. And, um, and I did it. So now I know I can finish a triathlon. So now again, goal two is this. And I think whomever is listening, this is what, um, you know, it's a, it's a great, like you say, personal finance an analogy, because if we wait till the day that we just jump on the triathlon and we compare ourselves to all these millionaires and all these people that are doing so great, it's not going to happen. It's like, hey, what can I do realistically? How much time? How much money? And yeah, I'll make it work slowly. Yeah, and create a plan. I really like that. And I also love the fact that you mentioned community, which I think is some of uh, the things that you're creating with El Dinero Si Importa, right? So tell us a little bit about that. So El Dinero Si Importa was. Um, it, it's a, uh, I created it. The inspiration was, well, my parents, the, um, it was seeing them work so, so hard, but not having the right information for, um, living in the U S or for adapting to the U S. Right. Um, I remember being like 14 and telling them, um, Hey mom, like, cause I heard a friend, you guys need like a medical insurance. And, and thank God she listened to me. Like, I, I'm not kidding you. Three months later, um, she was in the hospital for like a month, which that would have probably affected my family so much that who knows, we might have still been paying for that. It was like $150,000, something crazy. So I think the inspiration was like, okay, they work so hard, but they don't know. They don't know they could have opened up, um, what we'll talk about other things, uh, certain financial tools, right? But um, so El Dino Sin Porta is, um, is my way of uh, discussing money. And, and I started by saying it's breaking the stigma of money, right? By opening the conversation among the Hispanic community 
while empowering them financially through business news and uh, education for better management of their money. So all that is to say that let's talk about money. Let's discuss it. Let's, let's, you know, let's take this thing like, I know, no se habla el dinero, por qué? Why not? It's like, it's like it's health. Taboo. Like, yeah. Do you not talk about health? Do you know that if you eat bad food every day, it's not going to be good for your health? Same thing with money. If you spend it wrong and you don't know how to make it work for you, it's not good. So let's talk about it. You know, so that's what el dinero se importa. That's why the C is there because it does matter. It, it, it. You know, I, they, there, um, there was just a study about uh, how money makes you. It does make you happy, and everyone was laughing at the study, but it, it's true. It's not. I'm not saying, and there's a certain amount by which money does not make you happy, but of course it's gonna make you happy if you don't have the is the stress of debt. If you can send your kids to college, if you can take that vacation, it's going to make you happy, right? Um, so it's okay. You don't have to feel guilty. We don't have to, um, you know, think bad of people. There are, certain pe there are certainly bad people that have a lot of money, but not all of them. I know a lot of people that are very wealthy and they're great human beings, right? So let's discuss it and let's learn And um, let's build generational wealth because, you know, we are a powerful community in this country, yet we're like not there yet, right? We, we don't, we're not financially, uh, we're not like a financially strong group. We, we're not some participating in politics. So it's like, so the dinero importa is that. It's like, let's talk about it and I will pass on anything that I learn. It's like, I just put it there. Like I do a story, it's for you, you know? It, um, So that's what it's all about. Yeah, where can people find it? So I, you can go on Instagram and it's el dinero si importa, like the hashtag el dinero si importa, no, nothing else. And uh, on Facebook, it's the same, el dinero si importa. I'm working on the website. And, um, and I'm also working on a podcast, uh, which is getting produced as we speak, where More than information, it's not going to be news. It's just going to be on subjects. On let's talk about what you know. I'm having a wedding, and who's going to pay for it, and how should I do it? So it's going to be um, just subjects that, as a community, we don't feel comfortable speaking about. So that's what it's going to be about. Yeah, yeah, I like that community aspect. And for those listening, I'm going to be putting a link to El Dinero Se Importa IG and Facebook pages on the show notes. So be sure to check it out as well, in case you didn't catch it. Now, this is amazing. I, I love that. Um, so glad that we, you know, cross paths. You know, this is a really important oh, thank stuff. You. you know, you, you brought up a great point. I remember growing up, and I think this was like a, it might've been a biblical term where it says something about rich people having a very slim chance of getting into heaven. It was something <laughs> about the camel going through like the, a needle or something like And, you know, I think a lot of people take that to heart and somehow the mentality becomes where like it's bad to pursue oh. money, you know. <laughs> and yeah, maybe pursuing money for the sake of having money is bad, but that it's it can be something that makes you happy because you can do so many good things with it. You can uplift generations. You can give back to your community and loved ones. You can create experiences certainly makes you feel good to be able to pay for your kid's college, right? Uh, of course. Go on a nice vacation. There's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely. So I'm glad that you mentioned that because I feel like sometimes culturally, it's kind of like ingrained to some degree where it's like, it's, it's bad to pursue money. And, you know, it keeps us down. You know, the, the wealth gap in the United States in the Hispanic culture, it's, it's huge. You know, so we're trying to fix that. <laughs> and it starts with the mentality as well in education. My grandmother... Um... We, we, my mom still tells me, um, tu abuelita ya se murió. You don't have to follow her footsteps. You know, your grandma already passed. You don't have to be her or something like that. Right. And my, my grandma, we would say that the money, like, it just like, it came. She would, I'm not kidding you. Someone, you know, she would get money. She worked her whole life and she would literally like get rid of it. Like money would come in and she'd be like, All the all the grandkids were gonna go on vacation. Brrr, the money would disappear. Gone. <laughs> uh, someone would give her money. She'd give it to the church. Like, um, 
it's funny. It's a, it's a menta- it's that mentality. Like, oh no, no, like it's not good to have money. It's like como que medio pecado, medio no sé. Like it's weird, and it's hard to break those um, beliefs that we have. Um, and I think I once went to um, talking about the the saying that you said. Um, I was in a church and some and a priest or explained it, and he said it wasn't about. Um, money. It was about feeling too rich as to not do good. Like more like ego, more like, you know, I'm so good. I don't need God, but it's not about being rich and, and having the means to do good. Like it wasn't. So that, you know, it's, it's a, it's a phrase that we use, you know, it seems, we seem to understand it one way, but it certainly has other meanings too yeah yeah absolutely yeah sometimes i think yeah might be taken out of context yeah um i wanted to ask you about some of your you know the 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 big moments too in your life too like your emmy award tell me about that how how was that how did that feel so the emmy award um i always say it's just um i'm thankful for the emmy it was a way of um uh, kind of understanding that all my career, you know, all my career, it was kind of like summarizing that, right? Like it, it was, um, it's a way of, of, you know, all hard work came, came, you know, it's a representation of that. But um, I was nominated for three other Emmys and it's just, I mean, the story was a great story and it was, um, I don't know if you guys, are familiar for the with the 43 students that were missing in Mexico it was a couple years ago and um it's a whole story and I am certain that Univision had a lot to do with that story being getting global because I think not I think we were one of the first ones there we pushed the story we talked to you know we had three or four teams and um we risked our life that was the one story that and and I'm glad it won the Emmy because I had never been afraid to, I mean, you're a little afraid, but that story, I actually cried before I got on the airplane because I didn't want to go because I had my kid by then and it was dangerous. The, the rumors were saying that the mafia in that town, that's a very mafia narco story. If anyone, it's a Netflix now. I think there's a wow, documentary. Wow, that's amazing. What's the name of the documentary? Do you know? You know, I don't know. I just heard that it's there. Um, I mean, if you put Google, you, aquí ahora los 43, we did two specials too, um, or three. But um, yeah, I'll search for it and put it on the show notes. Yeah, it's, it's you know, it's like, oh, it's like a movie, right? It's like politics at its worst and um, with mafia and narcos. But the, the, the rumor was that they were going to kill journalists who got there. We were one of the first ones. The Emmy was for news breaking, meaning we were there first. We broke the news. We were alive and so on. So um, I remember um, cr- uh, crying at the airport. I had, I had, I didn't have a passport at that time because I was um, traveling somewhere and getting a visa, Brazil or something. And so they sent me to Mexico first to Tijuana, and from Tijuana I flew to, um, I where was this town? Um, Ayotzinapa. So I was with my mom in Tijuana on the airplane, on the airport, and I was crying. And I'm not, I don't cry easily and I don't get scared easily, but I'm like, like, I, I'm scared. I'm scared. And, and it was so scary, not only for me, that for the first time in my life, um, we marked the car. Our executive um, producer from the Mexico Bureau decided it was we were going to mark the car with like um, foreign journalists or periodistas extranjero, which we ha- I had never done, never in my entire life or career. So it was, you know, when I say that it was, it was scary and we were in this little hotel where I thought, oh, you know, these people could come in here and just, you know, and then we were, and then it was a gloomy story. We were going to the last, um, Las Fosas, como se dice en inglés, perdón, que estoy hoy. I'm not sure actually. Fosas. Um, <laughs> you got me on that one. 
Well, it's where they, you know, they kill the, you know, when they kill people in this town, in this town, they put them in like, um, let me, let me Google it. It's kind of like a, a, a gray, a shallow grave. Grave, the... Graves, yes. The gotcha. shallow graves, right? Like, com, com, like with a lot of, for many people, not just yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, mass graves. Yeah. Eso, mass graves. So, um, it was just, you know, gloomy all over the place. We were, we would go and, and, and to these graves and then it was like all the families were there hoping for the students and they would bring out other people from, they were murdered at other times or that week. Ugh, it was horrible. Horrible. So anyway, what's the Emmy to me? It's just a summary of the hundreds of stories that we've done. Um, I'm glad that it got, you know, we got it up for that one because it was a good one, but uh, we've done many and, and it's just a lot of hard work. Like I mentioned, any journalist, um, anyone who works in journalism, it's not an easy career, especially if you have a family. So it was, um, it was awesome to be in New York and to be among the greatest journalists that I have known. I'm a big, I, I watch Sunday morning every Sunday. Well, every Sunday, obviously. And, you know, I, I got to take pictures with some of them. The 60 Minutes reporters were there. And it's just like, and we're here too. <laughs> so um, it, was, it was awesome. It was great. That is awesome. Yeah, that, that's quite the, the accomplishment. Um, yeah, thank you for doing that because it's important work. Um, I also wanted to ask you about your transition into the English market, because I know it's something that you've had. It's, it's a goal that after 20 years now, you're yeah. finally here, right? <laughs> yes. You know, I, I think I always want to innovate myself. I want to grow. I want to do more. And um, and when you were the, work in the Latin market, you know, you kind of, it's like a next step because it's a bigger market. You know, Univision is watched by all Hispanics or many, many Hispanics, but the U.S. market, um networks and you know it's it's the whole US and um and so I I started to work with a marketplace which airs on with a, it's done by American public media which airs on NPR and some stations and I mean I was so happy I, I have been trying for many years to get over to the American market and and it hasn't worked out. I just interviewed um, not long ago with a very large financial um, network, but um, we didn't come to terms on, and we didn't agree to to for for me to go there. But um, this was just in, if anyone who's familiar with marketplace, it is like the most prestigious economic and financial show on radio and um I just couldn't believe it like I would hear market I've been here marketplace every morning for years I don't know years I want to say five six so that morning I got up and I, and I told Alexa like Alexa play marketplace and I came on so it was like oh, oh my wow. god <laughs> <laughs> that is surreal people called me like were you just in marketplace so it's a big deal I mean it's it's Sincerely, with all my experience, it's it's not a huge jump, right? Because you go from business news to business news. I speak English, it's okay, but um, they they as big as they are, and as as um, they gave me the chance, knowing that I had never done radio, and um, and they led me through the steps so kindly. They, they, I had um, an amazing, I have, because I'm still working with them, um, an amazing editor. Um, they gave me their, you know, I work with their engineer. I've worked on tone. Um, they, they gave me examples. So it took me like a month to do one two minute story because that's how good they are. Wow. <laughs> but um, it, it's just, I mean, it's just fun. And I think that as humans and uh uh, and I keep saying humans because I want to include everyone, not just Latinos, right? It's good to to have goals and and um, and it was scary. I mean, it I recorded in my closet because you have to have no sound for the acoustics, yeah, for the acoustics. And with my, you know, I bought a, a actually I did buy like a good microphone, but it was just me with my script, you know, with tape. So again, <laughs> it wasn't the ideal situation because of the pandemic. You can't go recording studios with them right now. 
but um it was I mean it was it was fun it's fun to and you know what I like the most that I know I will integrate Latin stories I, I'm already you know pitching some but they didn't ask me for a Latin story which I love because I think um you know representation doesn't always mean like you let's talk about Latinos it means I'm Latin and I'm going to be watching out for my Latin community but it's okay. I can integrate to the to their regular stories. I can bring on the Latin concepts, but I loved it that I yeah, get to that is great. Them. You're not being boxed in. Exactly. Like you are the representation in and of itself. Exactly. So yeah, that makes a lot of sense. With my accent, it all because I did ask them, "Do you want me to get a coach to get reduce my accent?" And they said, "Absolutely <laughs> not." So I thought, "I love these people." Hey, <laughs> Sofia Vergara did very well with her accent. <laughs> Right. Um, so what's next for you? Because, you know, I know you're not done, right? You got the podcast coming. Is the podcast going to be English, Spanish? What do you got? I'm going to do it in Spanish. I would love to do it in English, but I feel that the English market has a lot of um, really good podcasts out, um, including yours, which I'm, I'm so glad that you um, invited me and I got to listen to it and I really liked it. Congratulations. It's really well done. So I'm doing it in Spanish just because I feel that, you know, there is a need in Spanish. I know the Latin community in Spanish. So I thought, um, let me do again, small steps. Let me do what I know. And, um, and, and, and truthfully, that's the um, community that I want to work with right now. So um, yeah, no, that, that's awesome. Spanish. What do you have in mind in terms of uh, how many episodes uh, per month or do you plan on just having like per season or just be like more consistent throughout the year? I think I'm, well, the plan is to do for now about two, two per month. Um, the idea would be to do one a week, but um, I, I have a lot of work as you know. No, I hear you. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> and I want to, you know, and I know for anyone that hasn't done podcasts, it's a lot of work. It's, you know, people that just think you just sit there and know there's production, there's audio, there's editing. Yes. A lot of pre and post work. <laughs> yes. And then getting guests. And so I'm going to do two a month. And um, that's the plan for now. That's awesome. We really look forward to that. So I'm going to be sharing every way that people can get in touch with you in the show notes as well. Uh, I've been really inspired by everything you've shared. It, I, You know, because sometimes like you don't realize, like you may not see yourself at necessarily, right? As, as somebody who could inspire others per se, right? Because maybe sometimes we're humble just because that's how we grew up. But, you know, just hearing you like all the stuff you've done and how you just, you were very strategic and and determined and you created opportunities where there weren't any because you were like, this is what I want. So you had that clarity and then you had the passion and the hard work behind it, right? And you just went for it. And yeah, maybe it didn't always work out. Like you said, the triathlon, you know, you finished it. It maybe wasn't the greatest of time, but you did it. And now you know what it's like, right? So the next one now, it's like, hey, I want to finish, you know, at least third or whatever, you know, like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not last, right? So that, that is awesome. Thank you for sharing all that. I want to ask you a couple of just fun stuff. Okay. Uh, so tell me, uh, what is your, your favorite Latin cuisine? Oh, my God. I would say um, Spanish cuisine, de España. Oh yeah, like but uh, not like this Hispanic, yeah, croquetas. Yeah, so let's say oh croquetas, okay. Jamones, yes, estas cosas. Paella, you like paella? <laughs> paella, sí. Oh, nice. Okay, cool. And, and you know what? I'm sorry. I'm gonna say uh, Peruvian, Latin, Latin cuisine, Ooh. Peruvian. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Peruvian food is really good. Um, wow. Yeah, you got me. You got me salivating over here now. <laughs> 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 Tell me one thing that you're grateful for today. Oh, wow. My son. I think that's the main thing I'm grateful for. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's what it's all about, right? Family. That's where you keep working hard. Yes. Now, that's awesome. And then I wanted to ask you if somebody was in an elevator with you for like a 30 second ride and you were never going to meet them again. What is like the best piece of advice you have out there for Hispanic men and women that are trying to go after their dream? Um. Compound interest. I would say compound interest, if you don't know what it is, research it, make it work for your kids. That is, I think, the key to one of the keys to 
you know, making it work in the future. Yeah, I, I don't know if this is true or not, but I heard that Albert Einstein once said that uh, compound interest is one of the most powerful forces in the world. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you put, you know, what's the deal? You could put a thousand dollars when a child is born, and that can turn into somewhere like two hundred thousand by the time they're sixty-five. So um, that's a powerful number. Yes, and you know what I tell people is that it can go both ways. It's your enemy when you borrow money, right? So credit cards, compound interest is working against you. And when you're saving and investing, it's your friend and working for you. So definitely look that up and be sure to tune into El Dinero Si Importa as well. You can hear lots of great topics about personal finance and just getting rid of the taboo of speaking about finance. So join, be sure to join that community. Uh, Mayra, thank you so much. I know you're super busy, so I'm very grateful that you took the time to share with us uh, your story and just some great, uh, inspiration, you know, that we can all use. So really appreciate it. Um, I look forward to hearing your podcast and seeing what else you got, uh, cooking up. Cause I know you're, you're not done, right? You're <laughs> <laughs> no, no, who's done. No, we shouldn't all be done. No, thank you so much for the invite. It was wonderful to speak with you and I will sure, you know, I'll have you over on my podcast next. Um, and I think that, um, I want to thank everyone that that's listening. And I think my message is, you know, get informed and uh, let's lift each other up. Let's help each other up. Like someone has a dream, support it. You know, we're done with this. Like, I know, tu, you know, tu por qué? No, seas bobo. no, we're, no. In this country, these Latinos that we are, we support each other and we lift each other up. Absolutely. I love that. Thank you so much, Maida. Thank you. All right, thank you all for tuning in. And we'll see you in the next episode. Be sure to tune in to the series. Grown up Latino, grown up Latina. Uh, I'm going to continue to have great guests. And uh, yeah, like Mayra said, we're here to uplift each other. So be sure to tune in. We'll see you in the next episode. Thank you for listening to On My Way to Wealth. If you have any questions, please send me an email at Luis at onmywaytowealth.com. The information provided here is for information and education purposes only. The opinions expressed herein are solely those of myself, unless otherwise specifically cited. Material presented is believed to be from reliable sources and no representations are made by my firm or myself about other parties' information or accuracy or completeness. All information or ideas provided should be discussed in detail with a financial advisor, accountant, or legal counsel prior to implementation. Thank you.